Okay, the conjugate pair theorem, take 27. <laughs> Keep, it's getting late at night. This is getting rough. I'm having a hard time getting through this. I think I can do it this time. Conjugate pair theorem basically states this. If you have um, a, a root of any polynomial, let's say, let's say it's a really nasty polynomial like this, where you had, um, yeah, A sub n, you know, the general form of a polynomial. You know, if you ever look up polynomial, you'll probably see something like this as the definition. Dot, 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 down to A sub zero. I'm not going to give you the whole thing, but, you know, something really ugly, like x to the fifth plus x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus, you know, on down the line. And we knew that a plus bi, it had a complex conjugate, and we knew what that conjugate, or it had a complex number as its root, and we knew, um, you know, we know what that that is a root of that of that polynomial. Then we know that its complex conjugate, there we go, is also a root. So they always come in pairs. Imaginary numbers come in pairs when it comes to polynomials. That's essentially what the conjugate, the conjugate pair theorem says. So if you had a function, let's, let's, let's take it down a notch, and then we'll take it back up a notch. So let's say we had a function of a, h of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 5. Well, I know that that polynomial has a root of negative 1 plus 2i. Okay, I know that. So I'm going to use synthetic division and show that the other root would be 1 minus 2i. So that would be oh, negative 1, excuse me. Whew. Yeah, so negative 1 minus 2i would be your other root because they're complex conjugates. So negative 1 plus 2i is what goes in the box. And then we got 1, 2, and 5. You bring down your first term, which is 1. 1 times negative 1 plus 2i is negative 1 plus 2i. Add down, well, this is really plus 0i, and so 2 minus 1 is 1, 0 plus 2i is 2i. Then we have to multiply the, you know, these two together, so uh, hopefully you know how to multiply c complex numbers. And you multiply those and you get negative 1 minus 2i plus 2i plus 4i squared. Well, these two cross out, and you have negative 1 minus 4, because i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5. That goes here, and you get 0. Thank goodness. So, um, we were starting with an x squared, so we know we have x plus 1 plus 2i. And then I'll go ahead and set that to 0, not because this is a 0, that's the remainder. And uh, so you solve that, and we'd subtract the 2i and subtract the 1. So x equals um, negative 1 plus 2i. Oh, minus 2i. Negative 1 minus 2i, because you'd subtract 2i from both sides. And I better show my work. Let's show my work so I don't screw that up for somebody. So x plus 1 equals negative 2i. Then you'd subtract the 1 and put it in complex form. So x equals negative 1 minus 2i. And if you look, you know, indeed, those were our two conjugates. Now, you could have also done the same thing with the quadratic formula and did the x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Wow. All over 2a. Wow. Let me put the minus in there. That's, sorry, I was at the edge and kind of cramped. But you could use the quadratic formula, too, and that would also produce those two. But when you have something larger, uh, maybe much larger, so let's say something of the fourth degree magnitude. So a fourth degree -er might look like this. So maybe your function is p at x equals x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus 14x squared plus, uh, minus... 36x plus 45. 
Okay? And we knew that 2 plus i, sorry if that's bumping around, we know that 2 plus i is a root of that. We just know that. Well, let's use synthetic division and go ahead and find all of my roots to this. And there's four of them because this is a fourth degree polynomial. And so 2 plus i would go here, and you'd have 1 minus 4 plus 14 minus 36 plus 45. And so you bring down your first term. I needed to leave myself a little more room, but that's okay. We'll make it work. So that's 1. So then we'd have 2 plus i. Now the biggest issue is this is, you're going to, combine them on accident. So we got a negative 4 plus 0, I got to run on so to the other number beside it. And you always put that 0i in there so when you add it all works out. So you'd have negative 2 plus i. And then it gets messy because we got to start multiplying it. We've got 2 plus i times negative 2 plus i. And you multiply that and you'd have negative 4 plus 2i minus 2i minus i squared. So that'd be negative 4. These cancel out. That's kind of nice. Um, minus i squared would be plus 1. So that's a negative 3. And here's the beauty or the pain of this. Um, you'll know almost immediately <laughs> when you get a mistake because you'll have one out of 0 at the end. So um, 14 minus 3 is 11. So now we take 11 times 2 plus i, and that would be um, 22 plus 11i. Add down, and so that would be negative, um, and honestly, I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, let me pause here and let's double check it and find my mistake, because I'm, I'm thinking we're going to have a pretty major mistake here. So let me pause. Okay, yes, I did have a mistake. So, yeah, I didn't, uh, uh, let's go back here a little ways. Yeah, this negative 3 is where I screwed up. So let me come back to it. Sorry, sorry about that. That's going to happen to you, I guarantee it. Um, when I foiled it here, I could see, or distributed, excuse me, i times i is positive i squared. And maybe you caught that. And were screaming at me in the video that I was doing it wrong, you blithering idiot. And so anyway, you end up with negative 4, and then this positive i squared becomes a minus 1, which would be negative 5, um, which gives us a 9 here. Then you take 9 times 2 plus i. 9 times 2 plus i is 18 plus 9i. Then you add down, and you'd have negative 18 plus 9i. And I'm going to do that up here in a different color. So we're going to take 2 plus i times what we just got there, negative 18 plus 9i. And hopefully I'll do a little better job this time. Negative 36 plus 18i minus 18i plus 9i squared. Well, these cancel out, which is nice. And we have negative 36 minus 9, which is negative 45. That goes here, and thank the Lord we got 0. So, um, that's dividing it the first time. Now, we know that uh, the conjugate is also a root. So if we want to find all the roots, now we just got to divide by 2 minus i. Okay, so we'll do the same thing. We don't even need another answer, or, you know, another equation. We've got it. We'll put our equation together at the end. So 2 minus i goes in here. You bring down your first term. We're just going to use synthetic division again. That's 1. That would be 1 times 2 minus i is 2 minus i. Uh, wow, nice. That's 0. Always like when that happens. 2 minus i times 0 is 0. And then that would be 9. And then you got to distribute the 9 through. And you get uh, 18 minus 9i. Ooh, that's nice. Which is also 0. And 
So now we need to know what this equation is so we can solve it. Well, we started with a fourth degree, then we divided by the root 2 plus i and got a third degree, and then we divided by 2 minus i, and we should be left with a second degree. And so our equation that we're left with is x squared plus 9. Um, it, that's what's left. So we just need to now, we're setting this to 0, so we'll set that to 0. 0 equals our fun new function equals 0. And solve it, and so I'd subtract the 9. And we'd have x squared equaling negative 9. And so x equals, because you would root both sides, and x equals plus or minus 3i, another complex conjugate. And so there we have it. I'm going to pause for just a second. Nope, I guess I'm not. For some reason it's blocking me. So we have four answers here. We've got uh, the 2 plus i. Let me go back and show you them all. 2 plus i, 2 minus i. So x, uh, you know, if you were to factor that, show all the factors, the linear factors of this, x minus 2 plus i, x minus 2 minus i for the other conjugate, x minus 3i, and x plus 3i. And so this would be our function. I don't remember. I think I used a p at x for naming my function. So there are all four roots. And I think that concludes this. And uh, I hope it helps. It's kind of a confusing and a painful process. But I think it's worth knowing. Uh, see you next time. And have a good one.